Open your Bibles to Daniel chapter 11, please. Daniel chapter 11. So as many of you know about concerning the Syria strike, it's gotten really, tensions are really high. Russia, UK, France, America, Syria, and then Israel. And then I, Israel was trying to say Iran is the main culprit. It's gotten like really, really bad. So this may seem like a world war, it seems like almost. So we're going to look at some of the things here as quoted. I'm going to quote legit sources here. So this is not some wacko conspiracy theory, all right? I'm going to quote it from the liberals newspaper too, all right? That way, that way I can play at their ball field. So the article titled, Trump declares mission accomplished in Syria strike. <laughs> It's written by Veronica Strachwar-Lucy at 14th of April, 2018, CNN. A perfectly executed strike last night, Trump tweeted Saturday. Thank you to France and the United Kingdom for their wisdom and the power of their fine military. Could not have had a better result, mission accomplished. Trump announced from the White House on Friday night that the U.S. in coordination with France and the United Kingdom had launched strikes on Syria following a week of threats of retaliation for an alleged chemical weapons attack on civilians by the Assad regime. The strikes were launched at 9 p.m. ET, the early hours of Saturday morning for Europe and the Middle East. So as you know, they've already launched their strikes on Syria. And then there's tensions with Israel and Syria. Israel is focused, saying that Iran is the main culprit here. And then you got all the other allies over here. America, UK, and France. And then Russia is getting involved. Russia has been always, always talked about in end times Bible prophecy. So we see right here with a lot of tensions going on, it's always connected with a certain part of land, isn't it? So there's always tensions within the Middle East area. It's amazing that that sort of region can affect the whole world, isn't it? Amen. So why will it affect these sorts of areas? Because the Bible prophecy. Because that will be the heart of all the action during the tribulation. So we see right here they've already launched their attacks. Now, what is going on right here? So we have two possibilities of what's going on. So I'm going to read you the article here. Evidence shows Syria attacked own people with chemical weapon, weapons, says U.S., U.K., and France. That's the title of the article, written by Patrick Saar of The Telegraph, 14th of April, 2018. Now, this is pretty interesting. It could be, it could be that U.K. and its allies plotted a conspiracy for all this action to happen. That could be possibility number one. So let me read. This is from a legit source, all right? Now, look how it describes the justification of the attack. The prime minister told a hastily arranged press conference at Downing Street, called within hours of the missile strikes, that all evidence pointed to the regime of Bashar al-Assad being responsible for the earlier attack on civilians. The prime minister also indicated there was other intelligence-based evidence which she was unable to share with the public, saying, I cannot tell you everything. France has also said it has similar proof that chemical weapons were used in the attack, at least chlorine, and that they were used by Bashar al-Assad's regime. The Syrian government denies the claims, and its key ally Russia said it has irrefutable evidence that the incident was staged with the help of the UK. So you can see right here, it's he says, he says, she says, etc. So in one side right here, it could be that this is done where it's a staged conspiracy. That could be one possibility. Because why? Because as you notice, what plot of land, what area must the Antichrist rule? The Antichrist, it all converges into one thing in Daniel chapter 11. What is he, the Bible says? He is a Syrian Jew. He is a Syrian Jew. So because he is a Syrian Jew, it may be something behind the scenes we don't know about. And the Antichrist, he has to conglomerate see both parties. 
The king of the north, the Bible says, Syria, will be conquering lands. And then he will make that peace treaty with Israel, the Bible says. Look at Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Daniel 11. It could be certain hands behind the scenes are setting a stage for that. Daniel chapter 11. We will read verse 20. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within few days he shall be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate, so replacing this king, shall stand up a vile person. So there's this vile person who's going to replace this king. Okay, who is this king in context here? The king in context is verse 15. The vile person is going to replace this king of the north. Verse 15, so the king of the north shall come and cast up a mount. Okay, who is this king of the north, right? That's the question. Well, if you read right here in Daniel chapter 11, starting at verse 1, then it goes down to verse 4, where <coughs> the kingdoms are divided. From these division of kingdoms, from verse 1 through 4, then verse 5 kicks in. With, it keeps talking about king of the south, and king of the north. Look at verse 5. And the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him and have dominion. Now notice this king of the south has a conflict with the king of the north. Verse 6. And in the end of years they shall join themselves together, for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement, but she shall not retain the power of the arm, neither shall he stand. You'll notice verse 7, the conflict continues with king of the north, king of the south. But out of a branch of a root shall stand up in his estate, which shall come up with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north and shall deal against them. Okay, now the question is this. Who is the king of the north and the king of the south? The best book that will show you every historical account that will match up with Daniel 11 between king of the north and the king of the south is Clarence Larkin's book, The Book of Daniel. You read that chapter, he gives irrefutable proof that in every historical story, historical account, it matches with the king of the south and the king of the north. By the way, here's another thing. Even liberal scholars, secular scholars, when they read Daniel 11, they can't deny that it is giving the account of that historical story that Larkin is talking about. You keep saying historical account. Between who, Pastor? Syria is king of the north. Egypt is king of the south. When you see this nation also in action, get ready. See? It's going to get very, very interesting. He is known as king of the south. There's no doubt when you read that whole passage, it perfectly matches with the historical account. That's why secular scholars try to say the book of Daniel was written after the historical account took place. See that? That's why they're saying that. That's why they're saying the book of Daniel is a late book, because the prophecy is so uncanny. So they realize it's too coincidental, it's too miraculous. So we don't believe in miracles, we don't believe in prophecy. Let's put this as a later date, the book of Daniel, see? So this is evidence right here. There's no doubt king of the north has to be Syrian, okay? There's no doubt about that, because even law, secular scholars will agree with that. If you study history, there's no doubt. Now, this king of the north is Syrian, <coughs> but look at verse 21, and in his estate. See, replacing that king of the north. Someday, this person is going to replace this king. Shall stand up a vile person. Now, did this already take place? No, you're going to find out it's future. A vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Now, look at verse 22. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken. Yea, also the who... Prince of the Covenant. Look at verse 23. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up <coughs> and shall become strong with the small people. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the provinces. Who is this vile person who is the Syrian king who is going to go conquering worlds? He makes the prince of a covenant. The flood, the arms of a flood shall be overthrown, and he does it through peace and flattery. 
Daniel 9, 27, right? Look at Daniel 9, 27. That has to be tribulation antichrist. How do you know that? Because it matches. Look at Daniel 9, 27. The famous passage used of the antichrist making a seven-year treaty, right? All right, so if we know this is the antichrist, look at this. And he shall confirm the what? Covenant. It matches with Daniel 11. With many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause a sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate. Even unto the consummation that determined shall be poor upon the desolate. Look at that. Abomination of desolation. Look at Matthew 24. You don't have to turn there because we don't have time. But look at Matthew 24. It says abomination of desolation is in the end of the world. It's in the tribulation. So Daniel 9.27 is undoubtedly tribulation. But look right before Daniel 9.27. He, right? He shall confirm the covenant, this guy. But look behind it. It says right here, the middle of verse 26, the middle. The people of the prince. Uh, remember the prince of the covenant, right? That shall, come, uh, that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall, oh, look at this shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Isn't that Daniel 11 that we just read? See that? So scripture with scripture proves this has to be tribulation antichrist, Daniel 11. So this king of the north who takes over, he has to be the antichrist. There's no doubt he has to be a Syrian, but he's also a Syrian Jew. Why is he a Jew, pastor? Because keep reading in Daniel 11. Daniel 11 it's talking about that same Syrian. But look right here. We're going to look at verse 37. Neither shall he, that Syrian king, the Antichrist, regard the God of his fathers. Look at that, the true God of his own forefathers. So his forefathers, his genealogy, is Jewish. So notice right here that this Antichrist has to be a Syrian Jew. He has to be a Syrian Jew. So it could be staged for one, or it could be this, which is uh, what majority are clinging on to, obviously. It could be Russian internet trolls. Uh, the quote right here, there has been a 2,000% increase in Russian trolls in the last 24 hours, White said. Therefore, we will keep you all abreast of the facts moving forward. Defense Secretary James Mattis said Friday night that the U.S. was expecting a disinformation campaign by those aligned with the Assad regime. So a second possibility is that, again, you see he, he said, she said, right? Russia saying, oh, it's a conspiracy from the U.K. and the allies. And then the allies are saying that, oh, no, it's Russian Internet trolls. That's why you people got to be careful what you watch online, all right? Google, YouTube, Facebook, and all that, okay? Because if this side is true, a lot of it is disinformation. So what do we believe? We don't care. We just believe that we can see that prophecy is being fulfilled. Either or, either or, he said or she said, it doesn't matter. Because either or is going to fulfill this goal at the end anyway. That the Antichrist, he's going to take action with Syria and Israel combined together. Here's another article. This one is uh, really interesting. This is the title of the article is this. You want to keep your ears open on this one. Israel fears Trump may see job as done in Syria, leave Israel alone to face Iran. Title of article. Written by Toy Staff, 14th of April, 2018, from the Times of Israel. Quote, Trump stressed America does not seek an indefinite presence in Syria under no circumstances. As other nations step up their contributions, we look forward to the day when we can bring our warriors home because they don't want to get involved in the conflict. Trump also said no amount of American blood or treasure can produce lasting peace and security in the Middle East. Oh, see that? It's not warfare. It's not blood. What is the Antichrist going to do? He's going to come in and proclaim what? Peace. Because people want that. Who do you think will have better chances, a Caucasian American president that all the liberals hate or a Syrian Jew? Let's keep reading. <clears throat> it's a troubled place. We will try to make it better, but it is a troubled place. The United States will be a partner and a friend 
but the fate of the region lies in the hands of its own people. Look at that. So America will join whatever decision that they decide. So if this Antichrist, what, makes a peace treaty with Israel, what is America's job? To join. Look at this. The dots are connecting. This is kind of, wow. Here's another thing right here. Israel's Channel 10 News reported on Saturday that Israel and the U.S. held numerous discussions ahead of the U.S.-led strike. The Netanyahu's national security advisor spoke to British and French officials, and that these talks reflected Israel's profound concern over the Iranian military's growing involvement and presence in Syria. Earlier Saturday, a Russian general said Moscow may indeed now consider, look at this, tensions are getting higher. In the midst of war, we need peace here. Uh, may indeed now consider supplying S-300 surface-to-air missile systems to Syria and others. Colonel General Sergei Rudskoy, uh, Brother Stan can correct me if I pronounce those names wrong, <laughs> said Russia had refused to supply these systems to Syria taking into account the pressing request of some of our Western partners. But in the wake of the Allied airstrikes, he said, we consider it possible to return to examination of this issue, not only in regard to Syria, but to other countries as well. Israel has repeatedly urged Putin not to bolster Assad's air defenses. Russia has a big play in the tribulation as well as Muslim countries. Did you know that? Why, Pastor? Because the Bible says that <clears throat> Excuse me. The Bible says that Gog and Magog will be involved in the conflict. Now, I'm not going to show it in this video, but Gog and Magog in Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, I showed you that that's referring to tribulation reference. But even though that's a tribulation reference, you have to have foundations laid first, right? You have to have these nations already antagonistic first to reach Gog and Magog anyway. So it doesn't change the fact that these two groups that they will bring in the tribulation system very soon. So you see that we are closer than ever before for the rapture, and things are just heating up, amen. Things are just heating up. So even so, come Lord Jesus, amen. amen. Look out when someone proclaims peace. In the midst of war, because study history. What have you learned from history after there's war? People are tired of war. They want peace. What did the book of Revelation chapter 6, first seal of tribulation, comes out this Antichrist, conquering and to conquer. See, he has to conquer, but he's proclaiming peace. Second seal is what? War. Nations turning against each other. But, what, but for the sake of what? This guy is going to proclaim peace at the end. 